After uploading my video, Fallout 3 is the best Fallout fan game, I received a lot of comments, which I figured I would because the title is a little jabby at Fallout 3, and uh, you, you typically, when you release uh, these types of opinion videos, you're gonna get opinions in the comments as well. It's nothing new, and nothing I'm not used to. Um, some agreed with me, some didn't, and that's fine. That's uh, the point of putting up videos, in my opinion. You put up videos, you have a discussion about them. That's what I like about the platform. But some of the comments that I got wanted to know uh, what I would do with Fallout 3. A lot of, uh, I had received a few comments that were like, oh, what would you have done with Fallout 3? So I wanted to take the time to make uh, kind of like a freeform video, uh, something that I haven't done in a while. A lot of my newer stuff has been uh, scripted and, you know, the typical process that you would normally do for a YouTube video. But I still have a love for these type of freeform oh, here's my opinion as it's being thought, no filter kind of videos. So I wanted to do, uh, go back to my like Fallout, uh, like a Fallout rant series origins here and uh, talk a bit about what I would do with Fallout 3, just kind of freeform with you guys here. The, some of the ideas I would incorporate and use and how I think that, I don't want to use the term better, oh, like how I think it could be better because I don't feel like my opinion is any better than anybody else's. Obviously it's my opinion, so I'm like, oh, I'm biased towards it, but I don't, uh, I don't assume that I'm right over people. Uh, consistent, I, I, I like to hear others' ideas and I take them into consideration. So uh, this is by no means, am I trying to say this would make a better Fallout 3? This is just what I would do if I was in the position Bethesda was in, and I'm going to continue to use their ideas. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm going to show in this video what I was referring to in my Fallout 3 video about how Bethesda could have used their own ideas to, in my, in my obviously in my opinion, make the, the game more original, make the game more their own, and, uh, in my opinion, make it better, but that'll be for you to decide. Big fan of uh, your games for, for a long time. Um, and uh, you played uh, Fallout 3 all the way, like, I really played that game a lot. In, in yeah, Fallout 3, the, the AI basically caused World War 3, <laughs> as I recall, or something like that. <laughs> a little bit. I want to spoil it a bit. I want to start off by saying this isn't just going to be, oh, hey, I would just do Van Buren. I would take... Van Buren and oh it's so good and I would just implement that as Fallout 3. That's not the point of this video. In a sense, I'm trying to say this is what I would have done with Fallout 3 as it stands with what we have for a, a real Fallout 3. Van Buren was a cancelled Fallout project. I'm, I'm assuming the timeline that everything went the way it still did with uh, Bethesda acquiring the Fallout license and releasing Fallout 3. So I'm not gonna sit here and be like, oh, all of the ideas from Van Buren are perfect. Those are the ones I would use. I'm trying to steer away from that because of course I'd love to see Van Buren surface and be something that we could experience and enjoy. But in reality, that isn't the case. Uh, there's tech demos and stuff, but as for a full game, there's people trying to make it happen. But as of right now, it's not a possibility. So I am going with what I would do with Fallout 3 as it currently stands. This version of Fallout 3 is still set on the East Coast, still set in the Capital Wasteland, the Washington DC area, still set in the same time frame, still set in the same locations with the same factions showing up for the most part. But one of the biggest differences that we'll notice right off the top, there would not be Brotherhood of Steel and there would not be Enclave. I would accept a slight homage to the Enclave in the form of something like we see in New Vegas with remnants and or references to the Enclave since we're in the DC area but widely because of what happened in Fallout 2 because of the destruction of the Enclave we're going to assume that they didn't go to the East Coast they didn't have a chapter in the East Coast all of the stuff that they had going on was in California and we're just going to leave it at that now does it make sense that the Enclave is in uh, our version of Fallout 3 that we have right now the real one uh, in a sense I can accept it I can accept it much more than I can accept the Brotherhood being over there but at the same time, we're just going to do away with the whole thing. We're going to do away with Brotherhood. We're going to do away with Enclave. I'm okay, like I said, with there being some kind of reference to the Enclave. People trying to follow their ways. People trying to jumpstart their own version of it based on what they've heard from the West Coast. What they've heard from 
the, you know, traveling caravans and or word of mouth, but a lot of that's going to be lost in translation because we're a long distance away and we're a long time frame away from Fallout 1 and 2, so a lot of it's going to be hyperbole, a lot of it's going to be misinformation. We're not going to really hear a whole lot of truth when it comes to whatever the hell happened in California during the events of Fallout 1 and 2 because we're so far removed from that. We're, we're going to be, we're going to feel removed from that. This is taking place in the same universe, but it's going to be a different experience because we are thousands of miles away from where this happened. Thus, we're not going to see the Brotherhood. We're not going to see the Enclave. And we're also not going to be seeing super mutants. Say goodbye to those things. The Rad Scorpion debacle. Could scorpions live up here? Perhaps. If you want to throw some kind of, you know, recognizable enemy like a Rad Scorpion, uh, you know, it's not going to be the biggest sin in the world. But... We're going to try to avoid such things. We're going to try to avoid animals and creatures that wouldn't exist over here. Super mutants are gone, but we still have an abundance of feral ghouls. This is something we're going to get into later. As for the plot of the game and how all these things are going to be started, how the events of the game are going to start, what role the player will have in it, we will still be using Vault 101, except big difference with Vault 101. Instead of we have a dad in there and he's missing. It's fine to have parents. I'm totally okay with like a vault growing up scene, even though a lot of people didn't like that. Perhaps we can make it skippable in our version of Fallout 3. But regardless, I'm a big fan of it. I like, especially on your first playthrough, growing up through the vault, aging, uh, experiencing these memories the way you do with the white flashouts representing different, you know, transitions in your memory. I like that kind of stuff. And so maybe we'd see a bit of that uh, growing up in the vault. But at some point in the vault, instead of your dad running away or something uh, similar like a family member becoming missing, the vault is going to go into turmoil. Now this is going to pay homage to the original Fallout. We're going to have some kind of critical water problem. You may be saying, well, why reuse or recycle a plot from Fallout 1 or 2? Because, you know, that's, that, that seems kind of cheap, kind of whatever. Uh, unoriginal, if you will, when I'm trying to make a quote-unquote original version of Fallout, but this is why I would appreciate something like that, because it pays homage to the original series, and it is an actual problem that if the vault experienced, you'd want to see that uh, fixed. You'd want to you'd want to help that problem, especially if you did spend an hour or two growing up in the vault, living in the vault, everything's hunky dory, and then boom, all of a sudden, oh, the water, the water chip has gone out, or something like that, because. You do something like that, and original Fallout fans, it's a bit of a fan service, like, oh, all right, yeah, I remember something like this, you know, and then also, now, why would you have to, like, where does the player come in on this? Well, of course, because it's a Bethesda game, because it's an RPG, you're just the best, brightest person in the vault. It doesn't matter what your character build is, for some reason, you're the best one, whether it be luck or strength or intelligence or, you know, the special system, well, whatever one yeah, you may be best at, for some reason, that's... That's making you the cream of the crop, and so the Overseer is going to pick you to be the one to go out and find the replacement water chip or whatever situation that uh, we need to rectify when it comes to Vault 101 having its water problem. Like I said, this, this pays tribute to the original Fallout, but it also is a critical problem that I think goes beyond a bit of a family relationship. We don't get enough time in most of these intros in the Bethesda games to actually get connected with the family members that they want us to care about. Fall 3 is a bit different. I think Liam Neeson's uh, voice roles, the, uh, his delivery of that, helped us feel a little bit more connected to him as dad. But I think in Fallout 4, that kind of thing falls short with Sean. You don't get enough time to really appreciate these relationships when your spouse get, gets murdered in Fallout 4. For me, I was like, damn, that's kind of crazy. But I didn't have enough time to really connect, so I didn't really care. But I feel like if you grow up in the vault, you're going to feel a stronger connection to the location rather than maybe a couple of people that reside there, no matter what the relationship is to the player character. So the player character as this vault savior will go out into the wasteland, and there will be choices, of course, but one of the biggest factors is still going to be this Project Purity. We don't have a dad this time to have worked on it before, but we still have Dr. Lee and the scientists at Rivet City, we could even add a few more of those in there, but they were working on Project Purity and they got chased away because of the high population of feral ghouls in the Washington DC area. Once they got chased away by the ghouls, they took refuge in Rivet City and helped the local population with the science as we see in current Fallout 3. Same kind of situation going on, but Dr. Lee would then become the critical point of Project Purity. 
The first form of main resistance to fixing the vault's problems would come from Talon Company. Talon Company Mercs being, uh, I'd say, I wouldn't say major faction in Fallout 3, but I mean pretty close to it. Uh, but they'd be much more major in this version of Fallout 3. They would act as pretty much, like I said, the resistance to you getting to Project Purity. Uh, pretty much being assholes to you as soon as they meet you. And though you would eventually, if you wanted to, be able to get on their good side and work for their interests, they would act as like that first resistance that you see from just your everyday doing whatever you're doing outside the vault. Uh, once you get close enough to Project Purity, uh, you will find out that they kind of like accosted the area. They don't really know what they're doing there because they're hired by a different situation, which we're going to talk about here in a minute. But they are working for, like I said, another's interests, so they're just kind of camped out by Project Purity and fending off anybody who shows up. You just happen to show up and they don't like the cut of your jib. But I believe in choice, so if you wanted to work with their interests, there would be ways to kind of work your way into that, even though it would be you know, kind of fought against by this group. The support that you would get outside instead of seeing the Brotherhood come to your aid and things like that, uh, it would be from Riley's Rangers. Uh, they would be a little bit more powered up in this version of Fallout 3. Uh, at least, you know, they would, a couple of them would have power armor. Uh, they would have gotten these schematics from inside some of the archives in DC based on, since power armor is uh, pre-war, they would find some of those schematics, they'd find some of those frames, they'd find some of the power armor and kind of like craft their own for the most part, uh, like we see uh, the Brotherhood do, but to a lesser extent. They wouldn't be quite that powerful, just like how the Talon Company wouldn't be quite as powerful as the Enclave, but that's kind of the roles that these two factions would then be in. The Talon Company kind of doing the same role that the Enclave has in the real version of Fallout 3, and Riley's Ranger is doing the role of what the Brotherhood did in Fallout 3. And I think with those, like that already, that kind of original twist to it, uh, we see a lot more possibilities for lore to be opened up, for East Coast stories to be told, as opposed to just taking what happened in West Coast Fallout, using the same factions, kind of recreating the lore on the East Coast, and in a sense, cementing that the entire United States is filled with these factions, these creatures, when you could elaborate and make new uh, areas like Bethesda did, but they they didn't push them to the forefront like I would have loved to have seen like a big battle between Talon Company and Riley's Rangers as kind of boosted more boosted up factions, more military viable, and uh, they're really going to war over something like Project Purity, which the player character then comes in because let's, you know, it's our game, we can do whatever we want. If it is a broken water chip at uh, Vault 101, there's there's one there, and there's also a replacement one there, but the only way to get it, you know, typical Fallout faction is you gotta either replace this and, you know, save save the wasteland and, and work for this faction's interest, or you can just steal it and everybody goes aggro, or there'd be different ways to go about this, but eventually Project Purity would be the key to fixing whatever problem was going on with Vault 101, and the ultimate battle would ensue. The battle would be inevitable. It would be Talon Company versus Riley's Rangers. Now, Talon Company, like I said, is working for another organization. I would have that be the, the Institute, which would be a bit of a foreshadowing into Fallout 4. Why would the Institute have this uh, interest, this vested interest? Well, um, there would be a lot of escaped synths in the area, like we see in the Replicated Man quest. Uh, there would be a bit more of those uh, instances, and we would see cur uh, cursors and uh, uh, people like Zimmer out there looking for these synths, but also incorporating the help of this Talon company to protect them militarily, even though I guess they wouldn't technically need it being from the Institute and how good uh, coursers are and stuff like that. But uh, just to kind of be their guides in the Capital Wasteland. And they also get privy to the scientific pursuit that's going on with Project Purity and uh, they want involved apparently a lot of synths are operating in the uh, Rivet City situation with the scientists, so now the Institute has a vested interest in whatever they're doing, and here we are at Project Purity, and so the Talon Company, with the backing of the Institute, is going up against Riley's Rangers, who's a little bit boosted. Uh, not Like I said, not quite up to par where the Brotherhood was in Fallout 3, but pretty close to it. So we would have this, this big battle between those. Now, you would have the choice of, you know, like I said, fighting both factions, destroying them both, uh, siding with Talon Company, siding with Riley's Rangers, or ignoring the whole thing and just kind of going for your goal to get whatever, all of which would have different consequences, 
all of which would uh, change and, uh, you know, kind of manipulate the ending uh, to what your actions were. And the battle itself, I'd imagine, would shape differently. Like we see, kind of like how we see with the Battle of Hoover Dam uh, in New Vegas, it would shape differently based on uh, who you talk to in the wasteland, which factions or groups, like say the Republic of Dave is up there, so you're on good terms with them and they'll aid you in the battle at Project Purity. I know that kind of sounds like a recycled rehash of New Vegas, I just think that is a really good way to culminate the story. As one final tribute to the original Fallout, once all of this was said and done and all the dust was cleared, you would return to Vault 101, fixing the problem, and the Overseer would thank you, but then uh, ask you to leave as you were no longer a viable uh, vault dweller. Uh, they were scared of the effect you would have on people. You know, it's just the, the, the basic of like, oh, you're a hero, but you have to leave because I like paying tribute to the classic games without completely using their stuff. I think that that's a really good way to end the story as well. There would not be gameplay after the main story. The story would end once you completed that. So anything you wanted to get done would have to be uh, gotten, you would have to do it before completing the main quest. I think the, once the main quest ends, the story should be over. Now, a lot of people are like, oh, I like playing Fallout afterwards, and oh, that's fine. I'm just saying, for this Fallout 3, that is exactly how I, uh, I, like I said, this is how I'd make the game. This is exactly how I'd like it, like that. I just like the story having a conclusion. You're done, there you go, the end. And you can get all that fun stuff done in the middle, and then, you know, reach your goal. So that should just about cover what I would do as like a main plot situation of Fallout 3, still using Bethesda's ideas, not trying to go all crazy and be like, oh, I'd use all this and this and this. Just using even what Bethesda came up with, I feel like you can make a more original story that in turn adds more of a rich lore to the actual Fallout universe. And that's just my opinion, obviously. I'd love to hear what you guys think would make a good Fallout 3 or what would make a good Fallout game, plot-wise, character-wise, things like that. Uh, tell me in the comments. I love reading those and responding to you guys. It's really, really cool because, uh, you know, I put these out and Fallout is one of my favorite things in the world. So talking to people about it is also one of my favorite things. But I want to thank you for listening to me ramble about what I think would make a good Fallout 3. I want to thank my patrons and YouTube channel members. You guys are fantastic, and you help me continue to make this, pro uh, this project and this channel even better, and I really appreciate you. Uh, just really, really grateful for all the support that you guys have given. All the new subscribers that have come from the Fallout content, uh, that's a dream come true, because I love making those uh, long-form video documentaries about Fallout, and the fact that people like them is just so amazing. So thank you guys all for stopping by. Thanks for watching the video. I'll catch you on the next one. It has been Mantis. Uh, I gotta testify. Come up in the spot looking extra fly. For the day you die, you gon' trust the sky. You gon' trust the sky, baby girl. Testify. Come up in the spot looking extra fly. For the day you die. Yeah.